<laughs> oh, sorry, Lottie's just typing a message. She is here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, good evening, members. Just to um, I think Lordswood Urban Extension, which come before members a few times in the last couple of years. Um, so hopefully most of you will remember the, the issues yep. here. Yep. Uh, this is the aerial photograph, and the the green outline here is the ancient woodland. Essentially, the housing has been approved for this location and this parcel here. So in terms of ancient woodland impact. Um, in addition, the, ma the main impact really is the cutting through for access points from Gleamingwood Drive and also cutting through here as well. When the application was um, allowed on appeal by the inspector, there was a wooden management plan and obviously ecological conditions, etc., imposed. This is the approved layout for the housing. And as you can see, um, it's generally roadways and then pockets of housing uh, within it. So no, no houses actually back onto the, the ancient woodland line. Uh, this is just some zoomed in detail showing um, the separation from the houses and the roads to the ancient woodland edge, which is a, the buffer required um, under the good practice uh, in terms of ancient woodland protection. Just some more zoomed in details just to show how that buffer is being treated. This is a reptile mitigation area. What they've decided to do in negotiation with KC Ecology is to have the reptile mitigation area here rather than in the woodlands, trail bikes uh, causing damage to that habitat. Um, this is a location for potential dormouse bridge, which would be um, this point here where two the boughs of overlapping trees would be tied together, lashed together with rope to create um, almost like a natural dormouse bridge across the access point of this bird. That deals with um, concerns over fragmentation of that um, yeah. habitat for dormice in particular. In addition to ecology and woodland management, the actual application also includes materials of the buildings, and these are generally the bricks and um, cladding proposed and some uh, re recycle slate effect tiles and the final condition in this in this bundle is boundary treatment details and this is just showing a typical detail of a closed board fence for garden subdivision where gardens have a public um, side elevation there will be brick walls generally so just some detail on those um, and that's that's a set of slides um, as members will see from the report the reason this has come before you, um, even though it's sufficiently details, is Botsy Parish Council have concerns over the woodland management and the ecological factors, specifically um, dormice, and also some concerns about the, the surveys not being updated enough. Um, just to outline the, the background, really, the Consultant ecologists have been in discussion with KCC, biodiversity, obviously our retained consultants on these sort of matters, and everything's been agreed between them. There's no points of dispute whatsoever between those um, two sets of experts in the field. The only issue that's been refined recently is, is the reptile mitigation areas I outlined um, on one of the slides. That's just one slight refinement as to where that was going to be. And the agent has, has also confirmed that the Dormouse Bridge that was discussed in detail by the inspector is still being proposed as part of the mitigation. Um, what's necessary to obviously um, explain is this is, does have permission. And what we only have here is the submission of details for conditions imposed by the inspector. Oh. What I think is useful to just remind um, everybody is this was discussed as a public inquiry um, at the time, that was in 2015, and that was attended by Boxley Parish Council and was also attended by the Biodiversity Office at KCC. So ecological issues were fully debated at the public inquiry. The inspector made some conclusions following his um, consideration of the evidence and the witness statements made at that inquiry. And there's basically three key um, paragraphs from the inspector's report, which I think we need to read out just to get the context. He said, the harm to the ancient woodland is outweighed by the benefits of coppice management being reintroduced. And that <laughs> coppice management is part of the woodland management plan that's being for, for members. 
He also said the potential for harm to protected species would be sufficiently mitigated by woodland management strategy with nature conservation at its heart. So he was satisfied on that point. And specific on dormice, he said, it has not been shown that, subject to measures such as a dormouse bridge, there would be any detrimental effect on protected species. So in the context of those statements, when we look at a submission of details pursuant to conditions imposed by the inspector, it's not appropriate to either revisit his conclusions on those points or to contradict those conclusions when considering the details that come before us. Um, so that's the that's the end of the presentation. <coughs> Thank you. Right, we have a representation, as you might expect, given that introduction from Boxley Parish Council on this, which I am intending to read now. <coughs> Boxley Parish Council do not find the woodland management plan robust enough. There's no schedule of works in the 25 year plan. For an area of ancient woodland full of protected species, the management plan needs to be detailed and the financing of such a plan ring-fenced. We have noted the, the proposed funding mechanism provided by the applicant find it falls short on two fronts, namely the proposed charge of £200 to £150 per property does not have any provision for inflation of the service charge. 89 houses times 250 times five years equals £111,250, which is £1,432 less than the total five-year cost predicted. The warden provision allows for payment of a warden two days a week. The money allowed would pay him £48 per day. Is this enough for a suitably qualified person? We doubt it. There is no provision for training for the appointed warden, so it must be assumed that a qualified person would be employed. The applicant rightly says that BPC is more concerned with the mechanisms for implementation of wooden and management plan rather than the principles. This is because principles are easy to spelt, but the delivery and implementation of such principles are harder to enact and therefore more important. BPC manages a considerable area of woodland. We have a 25-year management plan for that woodland. The details work to be carried out in each area for every year of the 25-year plan. I can look ahead 10 years from now and see exactly what work will be carried out that year. This proposed plan does not deliver sufficient detail on its implementation and who will be monitoring the work carried out or more importantly if it's to be carried out. Species of principal importance. There are 943 species of principal importance included in the Schedule 41 list. These are the species found in England which were identified as requiring action under the UK Biodiversity Action Plan and which continue to be regarded as conservation priorities under the UK post-2010 biodiversity framework. The following species of principal importance have been recorded on the site. The hazel dormouse, the slow worm, the common lizard, the song thrush, the nocturnal bat and the brown -eared, long eared bat. The following birds on the conservation red list have also been recorded on the site, the missile thrush, the song thrush and the starling. It is highly likely that the, the woods support numerous other species of principal importance, such as insects. None of the ecological reports of this site have included insects, many of which are also endangered. We find this omission suspicious. A hazel dormouse is known to benefit from coppice woodland, particularly hazel. Such scrub habitat particularly including brambles, which provides berries and honeysuckle largely as nest building material. It is considered to be a largely arboreal species, reliant on connectivity for the tree and shrub canopy. It is particularly vulnerable to loss of habitat, loss of habitat connectivity and disturbance to nesting and hibernation sites during woodland works. This development will cause all of these with only one proposed crossing over the access road. It will also lead to a constant disturbance of habitat through residents using the woodland for leisure purposes and the introduction of household pets. We would like to see a proper woodland management plan with detailed implementation schedules for the next 25 years. We would also like to see more recent ecological surveys than 2018 that includes insect species present on the site. Right, that was from Boxley Parish Council. Um, I can't, I, I think Councillor Wilby is indicating that he wishes to speak. Uh, Councillor Wilby? I don't think we have any Boxley Ward members present. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Cheers, Chairman. Um, well, in fairness, Foxy Parish Council has taken the words right in my mouth. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, I'd also say it's not just Foxy Parish Council that have highlighted that. The KCC officer has also highlighted exactly the same issues and asked for mm. more detailed um, detailed plans, especially in light of the Dormice, where she actually mm. highlights that she can't find the report, the actual latest report. That's what's on the, the web at the moment. That could be updated. Mm. I don't know. But for managing Woodland myself, as, as you know, um, this plan is completely lacking any detail. And it also it concentrates slightly on the woodland but and misses the spatial, the, 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 the spatial edges. It misses the the brush. It, you know, it, there's a whole lot, load of holes within this report and about how it's going to be implemented is is the other issue um on most of these developments we see we see a detailed report saying in year one this is going to happen and then continuing continuing on so i, I think at the moment without that detail we're, we're severely lacking i don't feel confident that the developer um will actually carry out the copies on the regimes that that would be best practice for the for the actual wildlife so, um, and also, it's great we've got a, a dormice canopy bridge, but there's a lot more wildlife that would, would benefit from an underpass underneath the road, to be honest. And I'm surprised we've, we've, missed, we've, we've missed the chance to try and actually get that in there. Yeah. Okay, I'll, 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 open the, I'll, I'll leave it there, Clive, until if, um, the officer could come back. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll take a couple more members first. Um, I, I don't think that anything Boxley Parish Council has said contradicts what the inspector said um, at all, to be honest, because what the inspector said was these points have to be taken on board. Um, well, yes, Boxley Parish Council is saying that too. And what they're saying is that they haven't been taken on board in sufficient detail to know to actually constitute a management plan. As you know, Councillor Wilby, I, I was involved in, in the Nature Reserve, which you are heavily involved in, although not quite so hands-on as you were. And, and I am still involved in the Lem Valley Nature Reserve, along with Councillor Harwood, who sadly couldn't be with us this evening, which is a shame given the subject of discussion, which I'm sure he would have had a lot to say about. I find this the, the proposed condition and the management plan to be totally inadequate and we cannot approve it as it stands uh, unless there is something I'm missing entirely because it is not a management plan it, it's just a, it is a statement where we're going to do some work at some time in 25 years we don't really know what it is apart from a reference to copies in at some point and we, we might and um, we're putting a bridge which is nice for dorm mice but actually the content of it beyond that is really not much apart from a, a a small financial mechanism which may or may not be sufficient we don't know the problem is we don't know whether boxley parish council are right that's not enough because there's no content in the in the management report so how can we judge whether the financial mechanism is adequate or not because we don't know what the been ex proposed to be done so you know whether we turn it we say go away and draw up another plan um, or, or we just turn it down as being completely inadequate. I'll have to take advice on that, but I can't, certainly can't approve this tonight. Councillor Atkinson, I think you're next. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, I agree with Councillor Wilby. I mean, but I, um, I'm chair of Fent Wildlife Group, and we've had a proper management plan since we started in 1996. Um, for information, we actually went to Hadlow College, and some of the students there produced the original one as an exercise. So, and it went into a lot of detail. We don't really have much detail here. Um, I'm not sure that one dormouse bridge is enough. I mean, dormice can't read road signs. So, <laughs> so, well, how do you know? <laughs> well, I'm really sure that's the case. So, I think mean, one is woefully inadequate. So, that, I mean, I, so I agree with Council Wilby on that. And, Finally, um, my usual thing about bee bricks, I mean, is it too late to get any of those put into the actual dwellings? I know this was sort of allowed on appeal, so it might be too late, but if it's not, I'd like to see some provision for that as well. Thank you. 
Is that the only way we can make provision, Councillor Adkins, and or can they be made for provision be made for them in a more natural well, both, environment? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean bug hotels. I mean, I mean the sites you were talking about, they have really good bug hotels for something like that would be useful i think yes i suspect we've been more likely to get them in the area natural areas that have not yeah. yet been dealt with than in yeah. the substance of buildings yeah that was me i was just asking a question really. uh, austin has offered to oh, donate austin. one <laughs> which we may take him up on that councillor mumford councillor uh, mumford yeah i'm here um just so we could take this forward i think we're all um see that the management plan is inadequate and um, can I propose that the application is deferred uh, until we see an improved uh, management plan mm -hmm. and we base what we want to see as our improvement on what Boxley have come up without me listing all the things that we want to see. I think they were listed in Boxley's uh, um, presentation so that's what i'm proposing it seems that mr Wilby is seconding me i'll second that steve i've uh, i think it's already been seconded by councillor Wilby in the uh, in the im so um but if you want to speak council of Isar, briefly you can no i i'm fully in support of everything that's actually been said because the the management plan that's proposed is woefully inadequate and it needs to have some body to it before we could actually make a decision on um, what they are proposing to do. Um, well, we don't know what they're proposing to do. No, That's the problem. Proposing, <laughs> they're not proposing anything to do. So yeah. I'm quite happy. Um, second, oh, obviously, as well, Paul, Paul's already seconded it. I'm, I give my full support to ref or putting it back, deferring it back until we get the, an appropriate uh, management plan for the woodland. And, um, Mr Mackey has quite rightly um, redirected our, uh, 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 our concentration and, may, and asking us to ensure that um, <clears throat> we address any other details in the report that we may feel should be coming back to us uh, uh, with amendments uh, when we did consider the deferred report. Uh, Mr Mackey, did you have anything particular in mind that you think that we ought to uh, flag up, run up the flag and salute or otherwise? Um, thank you, Chair. You've, you've, you've raised concerns over one of the conditions that are before you for approval, yes. but there are other details, yes. for example, materials and boundary treatment. I think it would be helpful if you were to consider those um, in order that when the officer goes back to the applicant, um, we know if there are any further concerns, that we avoid the risk of a... Uh, a yes, you're right. We don't yeah. want to pay ping pong or whiff whiff. Yes in it this year. Do Thank you members have any concerns on any of the other proposed conditions? Well, I, if you'll allow yes. me, we shouldn't yes. be allowing sycamore trees to be planted, so I think we should specifically say that because there are effectively weeds. Yes, no sycamore trees, very good point. Any, any further comments? Because now really is the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, in my sort of read through all this information i couldn't find a term that said that the boundary treatment will be wildlife friendly so we'd like to see that unless i've missed it somewhere it's not in there councillor mumford i've read it thoroughly and it's not unless it's in the wording that i simply don't recognize yeah so that's what i'd like to be included Thank you. Any uh, any further comments? Because we we'll want to wrap this up and make sure that Mr. Mackey knows what's going on and Miss Geary, of course. Yeah, Clive. On on the boundary treatments as well. Obviously, I agree with what Steve said. I think we need to be a bit more specific on that and actually say about we we want the hedgehog the hedgehog holes. And also, I know um, Keith brought up about the bee bricks, but if in the end of the walls, for example, and then in, in the ones adjacent public. Um, public highways or public footpaths, we could actually incorporate some B bricks or, or inset bricks into the um, into those walls. That would be another win. Yeah, that would be a good way of doing it, yes. Um, right, so the boundary treatment should be wildlife friendly, no sycamores. Um, it should incorporate the, uh, the um, 
inset bricks we're going to call them now instead of B bricks I'm sure I missed something did I miss I missed something well, in your I said something else was about um I've seen no things about um dead wood about where the dead wood's going to be left yes <laughs> dead wood piles those are always yes in terms of boxy parish council's comment on insects that's particularly relevant to have some of those uh miss G- miss geary yes of course you can yeah. <laughs> um yes one of the conditions 17 is on bird and bat boxes are members happy with the the numbers and types there well i defer to council will be as something an expert in the field of bird boxes um i i didn't really see a problem with this so, uh, what do you think paul because you're something of an expert in this field um i, I, I think again the, the, the amount of bird boxes and bat boxes that have suggested is very sparse yes it is slow yeah um i think there could be an increase and maybe not within the um on the houses but actually on on some of the trees as such so sure. as, as we've done in the past we've put some bat boxes or bat roofs and um, some bird boxes on some of the um standard trees okay at a reasonable height of course yeah right thank you paul um keith councillor atkinson your final comeback and then we really must yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it says here five yearly reviews of the management plan. Well, at Fan Wildlife, we have kind of a rolling review. So every meeting, we look at our management plan and see where we're going. Now, I think five years is quite a long gap. So um, I'd rather see a rolling review just like we have. Thank you. Um, to, on that one, to be honest, I, I see where you're coming from, but that is the normal sort of time period you'd have for a major review. So uh, uh, that particular point, I actually don't have a problem with. And I see that Councillor Wilby is also typed much the same in the um, in the box and he's also typing something else, I think. So I'll, I'll wait and see whether anything else comes through on that. Clive, just a yeah. quick one. I am on the side. Um when, yes, we was to, when we were talking about the management plan and we're, we're talking about the detail, yeah. uh, Boxley brought up the funding and I think we need to scrutinise that funding in the resubmission as well. We need more uh, information yes. there. I, I think I did, um, I hope members had picked up on that, that the funding should follow what it, the content of the plan is and we don't know what the funding should be because the, the plan is seriously lacking in, in content. Therefore, um, but so potentially it needs to go up, but we don't know quite how much by, by until we know what actually is in the pl- is proposed in the plan. If you see what I mean, Miss um, Geary um, and Council will be, and then I really must close this discussion. Um, yeah, just as an added point of clarification, the in addition to the conditions, there's also a unilateral undertaking that was um, yes. submitted with the thing. That does also have a requirement for wooden management plan, and there are 18 um, issues which have to be addressed. One of them includes consultation with local residents and local yeah. stakeholders, so that's still to happen. Um, criterion O is details of funding, including contingencies, if that funding is lost, and also details of management structure, management bodies. So in addition to the planning condition, there's also a covenant on the legal agreement which goes into a lot more detail. But I'm, what I'm feeling from members is they want that detail to be in both aspects. Yeah, I think so. Discharging the covenant and also discharging the condition. That's absolutely yeah. correct. Right, um, and <coughs> I think that's it. Did, did Austin wish to say anything in conclusion or have, we, have the officers got a record of everything that's been said? I think I'm clear, Chair, on what additional information members have asked for, um, but we'll list them in the minutes so that you can confirm you're happy with them. Right. Thank you very much. In that case, it has been proposed and seconded. Uh, we defer the app, this, applica- this um, application for uh, conditions uh, for the further information as set out. Um, And I would therefore ask uh, the legal officer to take the vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Adkinson. Four. Thank you. Councillor Chapel-Tay. Four. Hello? 
very musical. <laughs> Someone turn that off, please. Councillor English. Four. Councillor Eaves. Four. Thank you. Councillor Kimmons. Four. Councillor Munford. Four. Councillor Parfit Reed. Four. Councillor Perry. Four. Councillor Spooner. Four. Councillor Vizard. Four. And Councillor Wilby. Four. Thank you. That concludes the voting, Chairman. Thank you. I believe that's unanimous, but I'll just ask Miss Snook to confirm that. Thank you, Chairman. It's unanimous of those members uh, present and voting. Thank, Thank you. you. And could someone tell Miss Brindle she can come back <laughs> uh, as we move on to the next item? That that uh, application is deferred, as, as, as you've heard. We now move on to. Um, well, I. Um, I'm going to take them on the order of the agenda. I, I had actually got the Kent Medical Campus, Noonan Way, Maidstone, and Kent uh, on the agenda, but absolutely no one has registered to speak. Do I, does anyone wish to actually speak to this um, Reserve Matters application? No. Councillor English, sorry, I don't believe uh, Councillor Brindle's back in the meeting at the moment. I'm still showing only 20 participants. Yes, What's I am. I'm yes, here. She is, she is oh, here. Okay, I'm thank here. you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, does it, anyone wish to to do anything with this um, application? Otherwise, I'm just going to ask for for a verbal, verbal update. Chair, could I could I just ask the legal officer to confirm whether, as the council has an interest in this application, whether it has to be presented? Apologies. Right, I, I, I was just going to say that we we, we need will we will need that verbal update um, and a very brief um, summary of, of any of the report, and that I hope that will be it. Can I um can I take uh, um, that verbal update, which I believe we have. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think that would be wise. Although the applicant isn't the council, the applicant is Kent Medical Campus, according to the report. And I which don't believe indeed. the council is the landowner either. But I think Mr Mackey has made a valid point that the council does have an interest and it uh, would be advisable to do... I, I, I was going to take an, a, a very brief introduction yeah. because there was thank an update you. on this. And I, I know in the format we're in, I want to make sure members are aware of what it is before we vote on it. Different reasoning, but it gives you the same result. So can I have that update, please? Um. Yes, I might be best just to go through the presentation very quickly and then mm. do the update because it just sort yes. of work yes. more, make more sense in that way. Uh, Whichever Kent way Medical is best for you. <laughs> and quick. Uh, Kent Medical Campus, in a way, Maidstone, Kent. Um, this is the application site. It's currently um, undeveloped grassland with um, post and rail fencing around. Um, this is the access into the site from Newnham Court. Ninocorp Way and this site here, quite low down, set below the level of the road. This is a long range photograph showing the, um, the, the site is, is relatively well screened at low level due to the topography. Quick plan on the layout, basically here's the ramp down into the site and a temporary car park um, area outlaid as such. And just some indicative landscaping. This would be permanent landscaping for when it was finally developed, and this landscape here would be more temporary to screen the cars um, during the initial use, but eventually the expectation of the building would be on this site, so this is more temporary um, landscaping as opposed to the a full detail scheme. Um, what I have in terms of verbal update is into one of the conditions is that we require this development to be temporary because of its, um, it's not quite in accordance with the illustrative master plan. What I've been advised of today is that there may be a delay in when they want to actually start work. So the condition that's phrased in the, in the, in the papers doesn't quite work for the applicant. And what they've asked basically is the five years should start from implementation, which may be a couple of years hence. So just a slight tweaking of the, of the uh, trigger and the time scale um, for the development to be in situ, in situ, but still to be five years as a maximum at this point in time. Thank you. OK, is everyone clear on that? Yep. OK, on, on that basis, does anyone wish to debate this further or shall we proceed? 
I would like to ask a question. Oh, by all means, Councillor. If the five years dates from when the work starts rather than from when the permission is given, what are the restrictions or, or what, um, in, in what way can we ensure that work starts within a reasonable amount of time? Because as far as I can see, that would mean you could start the work in 10 years hence. Mm. So I feel that's a significant change. Um, basically, because this is a reserve matters, all of all of the time implementations go back to the outline planning permission. If that makes yeah. sense. When a reserve matters comes in, we don't normally do a like you must start within so many years condition because that has already been covered in the outline. When you're granting outline, because okay, you say so when it, work can can start. And so the outline said three years within three years. Yes. No, the outline was more generous than that because of the size of the overall campus site um, and there'd be no realistic prospect that every single part of that site could be developed in three years. It is a longer time scale. Yeah. I mean, what I could do is put a, a target for the start date in if that's what members are concerned about. If they want it to be within three years, then I could add that, that as well start date but not a completion yeah, start within three years and within five years of the start it, it goes it's back to being how it is so we could we could form a condition that does those two things if that's what's concerning members well it might be helpful yeah for a bit yeah. of clarity i don't see anyone objecting to that so i think that does seem to be logical i think that would have caught with what uh, i've been advised today that that's their intended um time yeah. scale of, of yeah I, th I think it would help make things a little clearer uh, to everyone wouldn't it okay, any further you. comments or questions on that is that councillor will be indicating there i think it might be no it's, it's been covered chairman okay thank you in that case if there are no further questions or comments i will move the amended recommendation to take account of that change the officer has just made and the verbal update is that seconded Is that second? Oh, yes, good. Excellent. We have a seconder. So if you, Miss Park, would you uh, um, call the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Atkinson? Four. Councillor Brindle? Four. Councillor Chapeltay? Four. Councillor English? Four. Councillor Eaves? Four. Councillor Kimmins? Four. Councillor Mumford? Four. Councillor Parfit Reed. Four. And Councillor Perry. Four. Councillor Spooner. Four. Councillor Vizard. Four. And Councillor Wilby. Four. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that, that, that somewhat amended recommendation is approved. We, um, um, can I just have a confirmation of the vote from, from Mrs. Snoot to make sure we get it absolutely right? Was that unanimous, Ms. Snoot? Yes, it was, Chairman, of those members present and voting. So 12 for, none against, no abstentions. Oh, great. Well, well that unanimity may not last as we come to the most controversial application in the, <laughs> of the evening, which is in Harrison, as this is a councillor's application and therefore almost certainly destined to be turned down. It probably needs to be introduced. <laughs> it would be a very quick introduction, Chairman. Um, <laughs> this is uh, an application for demolition of the existing garage and front extension and the erection of a two-storey side extension and single-storey front extension. So just looking at the application site, it's here. This is the property. So in effect, removing this uh, very characteristic front extension and the side and then effectively building over here and then effectively building over the front with a monopitched roof along the front edge. So that's just the side elevation, uh, sort of a mixture of mm. the materials and then this going through the plan. So that's existing, that's proposed in terms of roof plan. Existing proposed, you effectively square the building off this way at the back and at the front here. Um, first floor, this is the front 
and this is the front here. Existing side and proposed, and that is effectively the front extension. So it removes um, the flat roof addition, which generally aren't generally supported where they're visible in the context of a street scene and where they require planning permission. So this is uh, application is essentially the same as a scheme that was approved um, by this committee in August 2017. Um, that was given planning permission um, and therefore uh, whilst uh, this that was given just before this local plan got adopted in October obviously we are attaching very significant weight to this plan at that stage because it had been through the inspectors uh, review and we had the inspectors report so we were attaching very significant weight to the policies and therefore on the basis the application is recommended for approval because there have been no substantial changes since that time thank you chairman well, I don't see any uh, anyone else wishing to speak, so very briefly I'd say that it's an improvement on the existing dwellings, so therefore one would have to support it, and therefore I move the recommendation for approval. Is that seconded by anyone? I will second it. Thank you. Would you like to speak now or reserve? No, I don't need to speak. <laughs> Councillor Atkinson, are you indicating... Uh, yeah, just briefly. I mean, condition four. I'm not sure if they'd have room for a bug hotel in their curses, so maybe if they don't, <laughs> we should have some bee bricks instead. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, quite, given... quite usual. Well, I, I really, uh, yes, I really think they should put some in. That's good. <laughs> yes, sir. but I'm happy to accept the amended condition. So that's bee bricks, is chairman, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Bricks, okay. Yeah, we, we really should start putting these in delegated reports as well if we're not doing it, James. Uh, I, I will make sure I have a, a a word at the team meeting with officers, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Right, um, uh, uh, is some, was someone typing a message? I think, no, I don't think so. In that case, um, that is... Proposed and seconded as amended to add B bricks to condition four. Unless anyone wishes to add anything else, I'm going to move that to a vote. No. In that case, um, would the legal officer please take the vote in, on the recommendation, please? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Atkinson. Four. Councillor Brindle. Four. Councillor Chapeltay. Four. Councillor English. Four. Councillor Eaves? Four. Councillor Kimmins? Four. Councillor Mumford? Four. Councillor Parfit reed Four. Councillor Perry? Four. Councillor Spooner? Four. Councillor Vizard? Four. And Councillor Wilby? Four. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could Miss Snook uh, confirm whether that was unanimous or not? I think it was. It was, Chairman. 12-4, none against, no abstentions. Members, officers, may I congratulate you on a, oh, I think it's a first for Maidstone Borough Council. <laughs> um, no, no, seriously, uh, I don't think we've ever gone for a meeting with more than one planning application where we've actually had a unanimous vote all the way through on everything. So congratulations, members, for setting some sort of record. <laughs> Great sounds <laughs> to <polite. laughs> No, no, seriously, congratulations, members, for doing that because because that one will live in history for a very long time. I feel, <laughs> and that just brings us on. I think to the final to uh, uh, Mr. Bailey to introduce the report on on appeals. If he wants to say anything about that. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I've got nothing to add. Uh, I mean, it, it continues um, our successful record on appeals for the first quarter. We're now coming into second quarter. Uh, we did have, I think last time I looked, it was about an 80 plus percent um, success rate. Whilst I accept the appeals have slowed down somewhat since um, COVID and the inspectors have um, did shut up shop for a small time uh, for the obvious reasons, uh, but we're still maintaining our success um, moving forward in the second quarter. Thank you. Any questions, members? No. No. On, appeal, on these appeals? Um, just, okay, well, um, may I just say, Mr Bailey, that on behalf, I'm sure all councillors would agree that we are very pleased that uh, officers continue to um, defend appeals with some considerable success. Well done. Yeah, well done. 
Thank you. Um, well done. Yeah. Um, uh, may I say thank you to every participant in this meeting, whether they're officers of this council, members of, uh, of parish councils or officers uh, of other organisations or just members of the public. If I say just members of the public, none of us will be here without the public for their partition, participation and comments this evening. And uh, without further ado, I close, declare the meeting closed and we can all go off and have a pint. <laughs> Thank, well you, done, well done, Thank you very much. Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen.